Welcome, Earth friends. From the minds of Dylan Oltoff and Rob Pinal, we bring you Lying on a Press. When a humble podcaster braved the ride alone with Robert of McNab, along came this episode. Dun. There the orange poster went, a silver tongue dipshit with beer in his hand and no idea what to say next. <laughs> Toss a coin to your podcast, oh. listeners of YouTube, oh, oh listeners of YouTube. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, hello there, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of Laughing on a Prayer. It's a new year. Rob, are you a new me? Um, <laughs> am I a new you? Are, are you <laughs> fucking? Yeah. Uh, uh, no. Are you? Are you a you new? new am I you new? <laughs> um, no, I, I'm not. I, I well, currently as of recording this, it's not New Year. But so it depends really if I'm going to be New Year, new me, or. But I think but when we release this, it'll be in the New Year, won't yeah, it? Yeah, it will be. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'll tell you what. If the new year is a new... So, like, if 2022 is better than 2021 and 2020, then I might be better too. But until the world sorts its life out, I'm not responsible for not sorting myself out. Oh, yeah. Those of you listening in 2023, wasn't that a great year in 2022 when everything just... Everything got sorted out. Every government got their shit together. Everything was sorted. No more viruses. Everything is just a okay. Everyone took vacations that year and everything... (laughs) Everything got solved. And if you're listening during lockdown 12, well, <laughs> hey. Yes. Those of you in 2024 listening to this, expecting your weekly care box rations airdropped by Amazon, who is obviously now every government in the world, <laughs> while you get your one hour of power a day rationed out to you, spend it listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Two Trust years we're have. in the Bezos <laughs> me, the, me, the Bezos regime. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse is going to like fuse with Amazon Prime to create the Meta Prime <laughs> to the destroy Meta the Prime. world. <laughs> The Meta Prime. <laughs> oh. that, sounds like a, that sounds like a really shit transformer. Yes. <laughs> Meta Prime. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. So any, any before we get to it, any any New Year's resolutions? Um, yes. Um, my New Year's resolution is going to be think of a New Year's resolution for twenty twenty three. Ah, that's a good one. I wonder what next year's one will be. <laughs> Definitely not thinking of one for 2024. That's quite ironic, because my New Year's resolution is to do the previous New Year's resolution. And that oh, New Year's resolution good. was to do the year before that free New Year's <laughs> resolution. And that one was to do... <laughs> and how's, how's it going? Is it going good? I'm pretty much on track. Oh, well, that's more... T- that could be said for me. Yes, yeah, so I do hourly vlogs about for updates about it. It has a total of somehow negative one viewership. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Even the internet itself hasn't watched it. Ah. Huh. No, like the platform. Maybe they should. <laughs> fuck's sake hello there everybody we are going to be tackling well as you may have remembered from the opening that three minutes ago <laughs> we're going strong me and rob i know we've covered this uh, topic slightly delicately in one of our actor themed episodes but now we're gonna do a full throttle bathtub of the witcher yeah considering season two just came out if you've seen it <laughs> then uh, i hope i hope i hope you i hope you're gonna like this if you haven't seen it that should be your New Year's resolution, is to watch it. Spoiler warning right now. Click yeah. off if you haven't seen season two, because we're going to reference the yeah. fuck out yeah. of it. Unless, of course, you're like some sort of masochist and you like, you know, spoilers. But Like you know, my partner. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> that. your partner's a masochist or like spoilers. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all learned something here today. Yes. But yeah, we're talking about The Witcher. I guess we could talk about The Witcher games, because like, they're like... I've played those. I've actually, played those. I've read a couple of the books. There's like four or five what? of them. I've only read about All two. right, so I think... Am I right to say it's the, the TV show, which is based on the video game, which is based on the books, which is based on Polish folklore. I think that's the string of uh, how The Witcher kind of came... How do royalties work? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Fucking Netflix is... 
<laughs> paying out royalties for every person that views season two to some family yeah. in what did you say Norway or Poland. Norwegian Poland. Well, I think actually wait. I think did I think the the studio actually might be Polish that made the game. Well, just about isn't every folklore pretty much from Eastern Europe? Like the Grimm brothers were German or something like that. Yeah. I mean, like every yeah. every form of folklore is pretty much well, Western folklore is from Western Eastern Europe. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's something like that. And there's loads of like different, like sort of things that are also similar, like like dragons and shit. Like China's got dragons, but like so do we. But they're like sort of different iterations. Yeah, Eastern dragons stuff. and Western dragons are very very different. Obviously, uh, Eastern dragons are more magical. They ain't got massive wings and massive ass bodies and shit like that. It's high. Pro- oh, is that? Yeah, I don't know. So, so yes, oh, would you say yeah. you're a fan of The Witcher? I certainly am a fan of the Witcher TV series. My my uh, uh, my extent of um, gameplay of the Witcher is The Witcher Three. Oh, what? Well yeah, which is that? Is that it? It might be it. E- either way, I've spent more time than I really should have playing Gwent. Gwent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that game than, <laughs> than kind of doing like probably like the stuff that the game is. Did you bag much is, tail? Is mate, is mate, no. <laughs> no, you spent more. <laughs> no. The one of the biggest highlights of the in, of of uh, Witcher on the internet for clout is the amount of women you can take up the garden passage. But Rob spent all that time playing Gwent with them instead. <laughs> yeah, I'm a gentleman. <laughs> You're the kind that would go to a brothel and take them on a date first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either way, you, you, you're paying. <laughs> I know. I actually did did my best to avoid playing Gwent. I fucking hated it. Did you? Yeah. And I'm and I'm a veteran Yu-Gi-Oh player, but no, I fucking hated Gwent. I I, I started playing Gwent mainly because like I was like, oh, this is kind of neat for a bit, but I wasn't bad. I wasn't very good at it. But then I was like, I, I got. You know when you get like annoyed at something, but then you carry on doing it because you want to like win. As a Dark Souls player, yeah. yes, that <laughs> Gwent is my Dark Souls. <laughs> I'm not good at it. There's a I... quote I want to see in the comments. <laughs> Gwent is my Dark Souls. Put that on the internet out there and just yeah. let other people draw their conclusions. Yeah. Although to be fair, I think like in Dark Souls you actually have to be like quite like a lot more skilled in Dark Souls than you get do good. playing Gwent. Get no, good. to be honest, it is just about it's sort of like. Dark Souls is the equivalent of how many uh, infants can you torpedo at a wall until eventually the wall breaks. <laughs> Around yeah. attempt number 246, <laughs> the infant's finally broken through the wall. Yeah. That's What's Dark that Souls. Fucking hard-headed baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think all of the other ones may have, like, weakened it. Yeah. You, I mean, babies have really soft heads. You'd think that, like, at least a toddler where their, like, skulls fully formed. I wouldn't know. I have to do more research, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we should yeah, we should do that. We should conduct that experiment. But yes, let's give a brief sort of a thing. Witchers, basically, we're in a sort of we're in a I'd say a medieval era base of like the society is obviously medieval fantasy. Medieval right? fantasy, low technology, obviously. Got monsters, magic. But, yeah, there's monsters. There's people that can do magic. Swords, knights, battles. All that good stuff. Plenty of fucking. Oh, Not as many brothels as Game of Thrones, though. No. No, there aren't. Um, I mean, at least George R. R. Martin knew with all the political bollocks that exists in, like, medieval fantasy, you need so many boobies to keep interest. Yeah, well, that's where the phrase sexposition comes from. It's, like, <laughs> it's exposition, which is generally kind of boring, but you need to keep people interested. So, titties. Would you say that's more of a cliche now or a trope? Uh, I think Game of Thrones sort of really started it, but I think it's probably going to become... A bit of a trope at some point. I don't know. A, a lot Maybe. of historical dramas like Tudors and all that were using that sort of medium as well. Like Henry yeah. VIII would talk about having a war with France and then go get laid. <laughs> Henry Cavill's in that as well. Was he? Yeah. I watched the Tudors. He's um, Suffolk. Season? He's Suffolk. Holy uh, shit. Well, he's in season one. Yeah, was he the one, Duke of Suffolk? He was the, the one, one that was he... executed. And he, yeah, he got a because uh, he was like, "Oh, I'm going to protect this lady on a boat." And then he. So yeah, and then they mention obviously what's that? That popular show Bridgerton or something like that. I've seen that. Isn't it? Historical fantasy, loads of it. fucking and all that sort of around. Pretty much any sort of depiction of historical fantasy is based yeah. around everyone's not going to live past forty, so we have to oh. stick our knobs in everything we can. Is it fantasy Bridgerton? 
Because that sounds like Downton. Because Bridgerton to me sounds like Downton Abbey, where it's. There's no easy way to say yeah. this, but due to racial diversity, despite the perceived era and setting it's in, sort of thing, it's, <clears throat> maybe it's a sort of sort of a. But is it is it like Game of Thrones where it's like medieval sort of fantasy? No, it's definitely Victorian age sort of thing. Like oh. I'd say eighteen hundreds. Oh, so it's set in like real world. Yes, in oh. a in a real world. In a real. But world. back to The Witcher. Yeah. And among so, yeah, all what... of these <laughs> monsters and castles and kings and boobies, there are a special sector of men. I'd say I call them a guild. There are a special guild of men devoted yeah. to hunting down all of the nasty monsters out there. And they are called for some. They, well, for some reason, they're not called monster hunters. <laughs> I guess that would clash with the popular Japanese game franchise. Also, I think like toss a coin to your monster hunter doesn't quite have the same ring to it. That sounds like. An amazing sexual innuendo. <laughs> Toss a coin to your monster hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Draw your own conclusion of what exactly is, is the tossed coin, the <laughs> hand tossing it, and the monster hunter. Uh, uh, <laughs> it just reminds me of that, you know, the college humor, the Batman thing. It's like, you tamed my monster. <laughs> Ah, uh, they are of course called witchers. Yeah. It's very special individuals that were fed a particular mutagen as children and have thus have advanced reflexes and perceived wibbly wobbly physicality stuff. Well, they're enhanced. <laughs> they're like enhanced beings, I guess, is what you monster Jedi. Like, pro- yeah, but except the force is in their balls. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that, that's one thing. I'm, so, I'm honestly really surprised that Roach can walk anywhere considering the weight of Geralt's balls. Sometimes the sun is <laughs> That horse is, is brave. Oh, oh, Roach, you've made me sad. I know. <laughs> oh, you dick. That's why I said is brave. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to put it past tense. So let's start, uh, okay, let's start firstly with, for example, because the actor that plays our lead Witcher in The Witcher, Henry Cavill, we said before in our previous episode of Sir Surrounding Him, a massive nerd, and yeah. this was again an individual that had played the games and all that yeah. sort of thing, so he himself, like, there obviously you'd hear little tidbits about how him on set would be correcting people about actual Witcher lore and saying his stuff is accurate and not accurate and shit like that. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like, if like if you're passionate about something, that must have been, like, an absolute dream job as well. Would you say <laughs> it's wise like... if you're going to play a role to be a fan of the franchise it's based on? Would you say maybe it's more better for an actor to be sort of objectively neutral when approaching a role um... as opposed to someone that fanboys and... Ma- what I'm saying is maybe uh, Henry Cavill's love for The Witcher could have... I don't get me wrong. Brilliant Geralt. Mm. I think what I'm trying to ask here is if whether or not it should be... Can like... a fan go a bit overboard? Yeah. Uh, I think they potentially can, but I think uh, they would definitely put all their passion into into it, I guess. Like, if you have an actor that's maybe, like, indifferent to the, like, to the fan base or something, they might not get as much into i think i think definitely it's it's great when an actor is like into what they're doing rather than just there for like oh this is a role but sometimes you like to see an actor who you enjoy their interpretation of a character but as we know henry cavill is going to play Geralt the way he knows Geralt, not how an actor would play a role they're not familiar with so obviously they read the script they might learn a bit about the character and stuff like that and then they give their own acting interpretation of that character however henry cavill as a fan of the witcher is going to be exactly like The Witcher. And whether yeah. or not that's good or bad is probably more debatable. Um, I feel like fans would be more pissed off if he wasn't like The Witcher. Granted, but... Like maybe, maybe if there was an actor that like interpreted The Witcher in like a really different way. like Even if it's a like, great performance, like the fans, they already kind of have an idea of what the you know Geralt's like. And then they see someone doing something completely different, they might be like, I don't like the main guy. However, as we really? know, like movies can never just be made for fans because that's such no. a small number. Obviously, they're, these movies and shows are made for a general audiences, so making to niching your character's personality could maybe be detrimental. Yeah, potentially, but I think the, the character of Geralt's strong enough, kind of as he is. Oh yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, By the way, full disclosure, I love <laughs> Henry Cavill is perfect, and the performance he's given has been perfect. I honestly can't. Like, actually, yeah, that's a good question. Do you think? Like if okay, if Henry Cavill wasn't the wasn't Geralt, who do you think you put in as Geralt? Because I've been thinking Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. 
Yeah, he's got that. He, he could get be the a good white witcher. hair and shit. Like, oh yeah, like he'd a, be a good witcher, Tom Hardy, but not a good Geralt. I, I, I know exactly. I guess because I, I guess because Henry Cavill just looks quite a lot like him when he's in like. like yeah, but I don't a, know. a makeup department can make anybody look like Geralt. Mm. You just kind of need someone bulky enough, and as we both know, Tom Hardy doesn't isn't you know he can get bulky. But I think Geralt's more sort of lean, isn't he? Or at least in the first season, he's quite. It's not thin, but he's like lean. He's not like bulky. Well, it's interesting you say that. A little tidbit, because Henry Cavill uh, mentioned this. Uh, he actually, his size from Superman did actually slim down because he did a lot more training to be able to use swords and that more yeah. effectively. So he did a very sort of a, a different sort of training regime that did actually sort of shrink his stature and give him more definition because... He was using, uh, when using weaponry, you use what's called functional strength, which is more muscle endurance yeah. and more sort of, uh, for example, people that can do like, you can do a rep in one second and that's like a hypertrophy, that's a big pump. Or you can do a rep yeah. slowly in five seconds and that's the yeah. sort of training he was doing to have long standing yeah. sort of strength, which actually altered his physique for it. Because, you know, as my massive knowledge from GCSE PE goes, you know, you have like muscular strength, which is like high weight, low reps, and then muscular endurance, which is like low weight, high reps. Especially when you're doing like loads of like maybe like multiple takes in like sword fights, like you have to keep keep up the endurance. Like oh yeah, absolutely, you have to the bring time. the exact same energy. It's like the consistency yeah. of those, and if one bit of choreography fucks up, like imagine you get the sword fight perfect, and then right at the end. The actor or actress stumbles a bit. Got to do yeah. all that again. Yeah. Because a lot of the shots, which I love in The Witcher, are don't cut and they are just straight yeah. choreography. You see everything. Oh, yeah. They're tracking. They don't cut away. You see everything. And I love that. And I that's hate, what... I hate fires that have yeah. a cut every two seconds. And that's what I think is really good as well. It's that... Yeah, I know. Because jump cuts are really easy and also, like, they're easier to edit and stuff like that. But I think also the fact that, like, I, I, I pay attention now to, like, long... Uh, kind of long takes and stuff. It's, it's the first, like, the big fight scene, everyone's seen it, you know, in, in season one, uh, in the town. Oh, where, like, the... that hardly ever... Graviton. ...hardly ever cuts. And, um, again, you, you might you might think that, like, not a lesser actor, but an actor that doesn't care as much about The Witcher might just want to do jump cuts, whereas Henry Cat was like, no, I'm going to do full thing. And it's always like the video game, isn't it? I don't it? know. What about Keanu Reeves? For example, all of the amazing work he put into being John Wick. Obviously, he knew nothing about that character, but he still did every all the crew and all that the exact same way. Yeah, but like John Wick's not like hasn't got sort of like a previous fan base to it, like The Witcher. Granted, I just mean I for example, an actor approaching a character he doesn't know. Yeah. And That's... could you imagine Keanu Reeves as a Witcher? Yeah, I could imagine Keanu Reeves as a witcher. That could be cool. <laughs> Who do you think would win in a fight, Geralt or Keanu Reeves as a witcher? He's, I don't see Keanu Reeves bulking up, so he'd be a oh, very slim witcher. Yeah, maybe he'd be Wily. He'd, he'd maybe be someone that like dual wields daggers, like that guy in Game of Thrones that took over Craver's. What's his name? Craster's Keep. Craster's Keep. Oh yeah, that guy who was like really good with knives. That dude. Yeah, I can't remember what his name is, but. Um... He was a prick, but he, he was, basically he was plays. Good with knives. He basically plays sort of every kind of creepy character in every TV show ever. At some point, <laughs> hey, typecasting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But... No, I reckon. He, I reckon Keanu Reeves would be a good witch. He'd be wily. Oh, you know, would be a perfect Witcher. Who? Jason Momoa. Oh yeah. He already has the, like the long shit. hair and all that. He almost looks like that Witcher that died in the first season. The one that was fighting that. Uh, you know, it turned out to be that girl that was cursed. Oh, Can't yeah. Can't remember the name of the creature, but it opened with a witcher taking the job, and then he, like, instantly gets, like, disemboweled and shit. Oh, yeah, I remember that. No, I, Jason Moe would be a sick witcher. I also quite liked, oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, I call him Homeless Ron Weasley in the second one. Uh, oh, name? I can't remember his the, name, but I loved him. Uh, oh, wait, I've got uh, Lambert. That's his name. I was, Lambert. again, oh. during that final fight, I was like, they were killing off witches left and right. Like, don't kill the ginger yeah, witcher. Like, don't, don't kill the ginger off. witcher. Like, Homeless Ron Weasley, no! If he could be a witcher, and if this is a successful franchise, I could be a witcher. <laughs> I don't think I'd make a good witcher. <laughs> uh, I mean, your beard's not, like, too much smaller than his. <laughs> well, they don't just want to cut. They wouldn't want a carbon copy. I guess they get my hair down and all that yeah. shit. But anyway. well, so you have to. I think like don't they do what the Jedi? I mean, like you said, they do the Jedi. They like kidnap kids and like make them into witches. <laughs> I think we actually. Do I don't know if they kidnap kids. The mage guilds kidnap kids. Oh, yeah. You know, if you show signs of magic, like Yennefer did, they just come oh, along yeah. and buy you. Oh, but that's I think, 
Little Jedi. I there. think the way... How was Geralt? Was he sold or something? They probably take maybe kids from orphanages or something. And But to be fair, unlike the Jedi, like they said, as we know... One in ten kids die. Yeah. So you know, and hard to say if they're more or less unethical. One kidnaps children, and one pretty much kills them. Uh... I feel though that like Witcher training is harder than Jedi training. Because like from what we see in the films, it's like a lot of the Jedi is like, oh, become peaceful with the Force, you must. And then there's like Witcher training. It's like, oh yeah, you see that big spiked swinging club thing? Yeah, you've got to dodge that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part when Siri in season two yeah. when Siri was going through it and all the witches on the ground were just like alright go do it again and that, to be honest there's people like you and me who are familiar with because obviously I come from a military family and you and me are no stranger to how tough people are in like basic training and all that and you, so you can't really be oh they're bullying her because she's different no she yeah. wants to try and be a witcher she has to be yeah. trained like one and also what I really I think I've said this before uh, um, how uh, Syrian season two is just a hundred percent like more enjoyable. Oh than yeah, season one complete goals. Season I, one she was fucking uh, Sansa. Really, season two she's yeah. Arya. I, th- I didn't even care that much about her in season one. It was just like the parts where she turned out. I was like, oh yeah, th- th- this is happening. But like now she's re- I think she's probably my favorite character in season two actually to watch. That's fair. And she's not a Mary Sue, which is a big thing for me. Like she's hang hang a rough time of it in season two. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like you're the chosen one but in the worst way possible because like she said everywhere she goes she just ends up bringing destruction and devastation and all that. She's yeah. like the opposite of Harry Potter. She's a chosen one but in the w- but, yeah. But, but in a way that causes nothing but misfortune rather I'm, than everyone loving you. To be fair though a lot a lot of people do die for Harry Potter. <laughs> and everyone is trying to kill him. Yeah, but Siri actually cares. Yeah. <laughs> that four... Or at least acts like Yeah, that four-eyed arsehole never gave a shit. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Harry. A lot more like his dad than most people thought. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. I absolutely agree with you 100%. I think, uh, yeah, Siri definitely took a lot of limelight away from Yennefer, who was really boring to me in season yeah, two. I-, I preferred Yennefer in season was. I think it's kind of switched. Like, I really like Yennefer in season one. Yeah, she's getting again, laid a lot more. And <laughs> <laughs> I was going to talk about the plot, sir. Oh, come on. That's, that, that scene that opened with her riding a bloke and she conjured up an entire audience to clap upon orgasm. <laughs> that's that's top, pure nar- That is top tier right there. That's pure narcissism is what that is. <laughs> yeah, but it makes you think, would you do that if you could? No, I'd be too self-conscious. I would, but I'm a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> Every orchy needs a witness. Um, just the fact that you applaud, and yeah. make, I just love that. But again, like with again, like in in season one, like Yennefer's not a Mary Sue either. Like no, she's she like, works her ass off too. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then she comes really powerful. But then in season two, you're like, oh, she's lost all her magic, so she's basically got like magic erectile dysfunction or whatever the equivalent of can't like, get a wand women up. that is yeah <laughs> can't get a wand, wand- up, exactly wand the slimpus <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and you think and then i know that she kind of is misguided in parts which i also like about her as a character is that she's not just like oh i great like she's misguided in parts like she was full-on gonna like kill siri because she thought it would be the right thing to do to get her magic back yeah, that that whole witch thing was so fucking vague and confusing. That witch and that heart and with the elf queens, fucking Yennefer yeah. and the I keep forgetting the ladies, uh, the one that oh, works the, with uh, was that the mage that was like who had captured Yennefer in season two in the beginning. Uh, no, uh, the uh, the black woman. Yeah, she, yeah, the mage who who was like forgotten her name. She's she cool. The beginning. Oh, when she killed that fucking table of people that were trying to oust yeah. her, that oh, was man. such a boss move. That was yeah. so badass. I just, uh, and like, I'm, and it's like, it's like, mate, like, you could have just poisoned them, but you did it. That's fucking based. <laughs> like, hey, handle your business. Yeah. What is it? Darth Vader famously he said in a, it was, it, it was in a comic, and it was there was this character that the Emperor was really praising or saying, that, "Oh, Darth Vader, you should train up this person. He might end up being more powerful than you." So Vader was speaking to him once and then just fucking threw him off a ledge and called down, like, one first lesson, threw him down, never suffer a rival. Yeah, I mean... So boss move and all that, and yeah, that woman handled her business. Oh, yeah. you guys are going to be against me, dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it turned out they were a coup all along, and the other guy there, who she could have also killed, was like, 
go along with it. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, that fucking dude, um, the, the guy that killed the elf baby. <laughs> well, it turned out to be the fucking white flame, didn't it? Yeah. You have seen the ending, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, which is series dad. What? Yeah. Ray, uh, my partner called that way before it happened. I thought it was yeah. just going to be something, but my partner oh, yeah. called it. Oh, it was the moment, it was like when she's sort of in the dream. Uh, when she, like, series sort of in the dream and everyone's fading away except for him. And you're just like, okay, so like that's just not... Like, that's probably not uh, just, like, a thing that happens. Because I find, from what I've seen, uh, obviously, Game of Thrones is over now. And, you know, everyone talks about, like, the sort of discarded plotline and stuff. But from what I've seen so far in The Witcher, like, bits that sort of happen are a bit odd, actually... Everything's are, interconnected. That, yeah, it's, it's part of it. It's not just there for the sake of being, like, No wasted weird. intrigue. Yeah, exactly. No mysterious symbols in the snow that you never find out about. Yeah. And... And they're shorter as well, aren't they? They're only like six episodes, aren't they, the, the season? How, how I think long? the season two was eight episodes, I'm pretty sure. Was it eight? I'm pretty sure. How long was season one? I think season one was longer. Or did it just feel longer? <laughs> <laughs> to <laughs> be a... honest, I've said this to you before, when I re-watched season one before season two came out, after, the, after I watched it the first time, I found myself sort of skipping a lot of Yennefer and series scenes just so I could get back to Geralt. Oh and, my god, and... 2019? My god. God, that was season one. And yeah, a lot of Yennefer stuff in the second season when she's just bumbling about, you know, like, it goes back to the Mage Guild. The Mage Guild says, oh, we don't trust you with your fucking tits. And... Oh, yeah, no, they're both eight episodes. That dress that was nearly full. That was like a minute yeah, it, it, away it, from it, her it, nipple. It did, it did look... <laughs> It looks like she'd gone to prom and her date had got a little bit too handsy with her. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what it looks like. <laughs> and to be honest, as much as I, I feel like Yaskia was just sort of thrown in. Like, right at the end, when he joined with Geralt and then they found Siri, I'm like, I just thought, I turned to my partner and I said, so what did Yaskia do? Well, he got those, uh, he got Yennefer and, oh, uh, whatever, the other guy, the other guy and a, and a, a bunch of elves onto that boat. No, I mean, like, how did he help Geralt? Geralt broke him out of prison, and then he just sort of just was there. Well, he didn't need to help Geralt, but he helped other characters that originally were, like... Like, he really didn't like Yennefer, did he? No, he's, he, he like was hoping sort of... Geralt would kill her. Yeah, exactly. But then, you know, he then he helps her in the end, because he sort of, you know, he's got that. I loved how he was, like, a jealous, yeah. like, ex-boyfriend. He wrote a whole popular song so pretty much saying, like, fuck you, Geralt, <laughs> because he... Tr- yeah, not as good as the the Toss of Coins to your Witcher song. No, but... you know they tried though. Yeah, they, they tried mean... to make something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I do still like him in uh, in in season two. Like he hasn't like his humor. I think is is something that's just. Very Can I ask? Were you surprised to see how ripped he was? Uh... Like when he was washing his shirt in the river for some fucking reason. <laughs> yes. Why? Oh, he needed to wash his shirt and be shirtless, and he had. A... I think he said because he smelled like shit or something like that. Yeah. Which means that all of him would smell like shit. But yeah. it was his shirt specifically that he washed. You know, just so we could get our shirt. Did we he... get a shirtless girl on season season two? Uh, I don't think we did. So. It's because we... Jasky is a bicon, so you know. A what? A bicon. Bi icon. Oh, was the character bisexual? <laughs> well, I mean, it's. It's really hinted that he is, isn't it? Like, you know, the first, well, even, like, the first what, part... What, like, he's actually it. into Geralt? Well, or was, he's just, like, a bit flirty, isn't he? And maybe oh, I thought that was, like, his Geralt. quirkiness. <laughs> well, that's, I don't know. It's never said, but, you know... I could appreciate that. If you that know, is the case, yeah. a character doesn't need to announce their fucking yeah, sexuality. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. and maybe he is, maybe he is into Geralt. I don't know. Uh, Ooh, getting wrapped up in those big arms. <laughs> <laughs> There's a place on the internet, I'm sure, where that exists. But yeah, were you surprised to see, obviously, because the actor had like a shredded six pack and all that sort of thing. It was just like, he wasn't bulky, but it was obviously shredded. Like like Bruce Lee style. <laughs> yeah. Um, or did you just sort of, sort of not notice I mean, it? I, yeah, I didn't really notice it, to be fair. Well, what does that say about I just me? Kind of... <laughs> I just spent two minutes talking about it. <laughs> I think it's more, yeah, I think it's... Um, uh, like so, like there's a bit which I like the really entertaining bit I found was when he's talking to the mice. Um, in, oh, okay. yeah, in, when he's singing in the song, song which apparently uh, Joe Beatty, who, who plays it, like just kind of improvised, <laughs> was like talking to mice. Um, hmm. Because like there was supposed to be like mice in the cell, but then he was like, oh, I'm going to create like all these mice like names and stuff. And then the one bit I did like is when it's um, like Geralt 
and Yaskia together when they see each other for the first time ever you think oh it's gonna be like really hard but he just goes fuck it and then just hugs him and I was like that's such like a good sort of like a sort of Yaskia thing to sort of do yeah <laughs> and on, on the other side of the coin obviously Garrett when he heard Yaskia got arrested helping Yennefer and all that Garrett was like all right I better go help him out and stuff like, <laughs> I better do it <laughs> <laughs> but you saying that now made me think like I'm worried this is going to be this is going to be a continuing growing trend of like for some reason comedy actors you see it so much in movies and all that. You find out, oh, these, this and this and this was improvised and this whole bit was improvised by the actor sort of thing. And I'm like, that's not always a good thing. No, but I think it worked. It, it, it did work, but there are obviously situations where that didn't work. For example, in the female Ghostbusters movie, so much of that was apparently ad-libbed and improvised and that was painful. Yeah. And the last thing I'd ever want that to be is like for the future of comedy movies, for the comedy actors to always think to improvise and shit like I, that. I suppose... That Ghostbusters is a com the Ghostbusters is a comedy is a comedy whereas The Witch is not so I think like Jackie the little, is a comedy character yeah um, but um, I think that he he's had like a well for, uh, Joe Beatty also is like a, a fan of like The Witcher as well and he's had like I think more t well he's had two se he's had like seasons to kind of create his character I think like in a film you don't have as much time. And obviously he's British, so he's just inherently more funny. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Sorry, suck it, Yanks. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have quite a few American viewers. Oh, no. <laughs> Hence why so many people are fucking enamoured with our glorious sensual accents. Yeah. <laughs> In it, brav. Yeah, oh, God. That's, that's, <laughs> that's well, grating. <laughs> If I can uh, steer the ship a little bit, I'd say my one of my main issues with season two as opposed to season one is that there actually wasn't very much witchering. What I mean by that yeah. is like we maybe got two. The first two episodes was Geralt and Ciri, and they go into a place and they find a monster they had to deal with, and then everything past that was plot relevant. Mm -hmm. And I won't lie, I kind of liked. I would have liked to have leaned a bit more. Obviously, I loved it when they got to the keep and Ciri's, you know, learning her shit to fucking like, uh, fucking like a Viking Hogwarts. That was fucking awesome, but I don't know. I would like in the first season, it was literally just every episode Geralt was finding, fighting a new monster sort of thing. And I, I mean, that's literally how he's introduced. Yeah. is by killing a monster. <laughs> like, guess... That's his first appearance, isn't it? And I get worried because this often happens. Like once everything's being like, oh, Ciri's destiny got revealed. She's going to bring the apocalypse, and not Sintra. What's the other army? Nil Nil Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard. All that start, all the gears are now turning. So there's gonna, so whatever's gonna come next is all gonna be focused on that. So obviously, Geralt's gonna fight those new monsters coming out monoliths now and then. But mm. there's gonna be no more witchering. Which, to be honest, I loved those episodes. I think there was only two. There was the vampire and that the weird big ant in season two. The big ant. Oh yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. Yeah, I think those those are the two things. I, will I liked say the vampire. The episode. vampire was so fucking cool. Me like, and my partner were trying to guess. Okay, we knew obviously like, Warthog Man was shady as shit, trying to guess yeah. what the fuck she was like. Mm. <laughs> she was really cool. And like, uh, even. The um, way she moves. Yeah, exactly. Which is like really. It's almost like sort of. Uh, the way they filmed that, like the camera work, it's almost like sort of stop motion mm. in a way. And she communicates telepathically. And she's got these uh, like contact lenses in that make her eyes like really. Uh, um, you know, sort of like vivid and stuff, and they, they've got effects and stuff. Um, and she sends like Siri to sleep, and then you don't even know really what she is, other than she's like this weird girl. But then, uh, again, it's like, uh, and then eventually, what's cool is that uh, Geralt then like works out what she is, and he's like, Oh, this is how I can kill, can kill her. Um, and even the, like just the effect, like uh, that the the her more I guess, but, you know, with all her teeth, like that's fucking grotesque and awesome. Um, and the way that she kind of like turns her body around after getting impaled on the sword. Oh, uh, uh, that was really cool. I think the begin the, the first episode of season one for me, I didn't really like the ending was good enough for me to actually like enjoy it because I think for the beginning part of it, I was just like. Yeah, it's... I guess it's kind of picking up where it's left off, but that end bit. It's interesting quality. meeting people that know Geralt and who have a history of them and shit like that. Yeah. It's always weird that Geralt didn't kill him. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's the thing though is that doesn't kill humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then he pulls a four chan and tells him to kill himself. <laughs> Well, get the guy like raped to sacred yeah, exactly. priest and shit like and that. And that's the thing, though. It's like at the beginning, it was like, oh, he said that he just got really high and then trashed the temple. You're like, oh yeah, you don't really deserve that. But then at the end, he's like, oh yeah, I raped someone. You're like, bro, you deserve everything you got. <laughs> yeah, you really had no sympathy for the prick, did you? <laughs> but the thing is, I imagine the writers were like, well, if we carry on that formula, formula, because obviously in that whole episode, it was pretty much a Siri constantly in danger and Geralt having to save her and. Obviously, maybe the writers are like, that's going to wear on the fans. We want them to like Syria, not be a damsel in distress. But personally, I feel like they could have had done both. Get, like, Geralt sort of teaching her on the job while they're travelling sort yeah. of thing. And could have taught her to get involved with monsters before getting to medieval Hogwarts. Yeah. And, and you know, I think it, it is true. Um, I think, like, there, there's, like, a middle ground between, like, the tra- like the damsel in distress and then being a badass it's like yeah like she's not yeah she is she's quite badass but she's still like a young girl you know so it's like fighting a giant monster which um you know with very little i'm talking about the big ant yeah you know like with very little trait also what like i know that she's like the newbie or whatever but why didn't Geralt give her at least like i don't know like a little sword to carry into the woods bef- you know to i think he only has the tree. two I believe he only has like his silver sword and his other sword. I mean, don't, don't, I mean they have an armory at uh, Viking Hogwarts, so he could have pinched like maybe <laughs> something for her to carry. I don't know. I think she had a real sword when she was doing her training with her. But... Yeah, she did. But then when he was leading her into the woods, like to this dangerous place that he knows is dangerous in her vision, it's like give her like a knife maybe I don't know something but she's just walking about with nothing it is often presented though in season 2 that sometimes Geralt's uh, overprotection of her is a detriment like he's coddling her too much for example he wasn't training her properly he was just running her through basics against a little straw man and the other witches yeah the other witches were seeing this and being like this is not how witches are trained this is bullshit come with us and get the shit kicked out of you which again, I love that scene because at first, yeah, they're being sort of pricks, but then as she carries on doing it, they're cheering for her because, like, hey, this isn't some spoiled little soft girl. This is actually someone that's not going to give up. Very militaristic. Yeah, and that's again character development. Exactly. She's not just perfect right from the off. She'd done that obstacle course using her elder blood and just did it flawlessly, everyone in the audience would have felt nothing. Yeah. And she also, earned that. And, oh, just that, that bit with Geralt at the end, though, we're like, so close. Yeah, so... <laughs> and also, prick. like, the, uh, <laughs> I, I've got to stop calling him homeless Ron Weasley, but, like, the, the <laughs> other witches, how they aren't just, like, 2D, like, assholes. It's like they actually... Appre- like, when she actually does something good, they're actually like, yeah, that's... You really get a brotherhood because, vibe from yeah, them. Yeah, because that's kind of how people are. <laughs> like, when someone succeeds, people like it when other people succeed. Well, if you're... Hopefully people... If like they it. earned it. Yeah, exactly. And they saw her working her ass off, getting knocked out, bleeding, and they saw her get back up and get on there. Yeah. And you're like, fair play. Because, again, these are men that leave, live hard lives, and they probably come across soft humans... <laughs> And all that, all the time. Can you? Here's some money. Please solve my problems. And then here's this supposed soft little girl that works her way out. To, she basically fucking who literally calls herself a princess. In, in well, she's thing. proud of her heritage. To be yeah. honest, she, Sintra got burned to the ground. It's all like Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Still calls himself the prince of all Saiyans, even though his planet got blown up. It's sort of like a pride. Thing. Yeah, but yeah, again, but that's the. Um, it's like, uh, it, it makes them more. You know, again, like with characters, even if it's like a little bit, it's like they start off as assholes, then they actually like come around. And to be fair, like you can't like can't really blame because like <laughs> like let's be honest, like the Witcher kind of uh, what's uh, you know Viking Hogwarts is kind of a boys' club. So like when a young girl comes in uh, and calls herself a princess, you're gonna be like, what the fuck is get like you know what I mean? I just like how wholesome all of the witches were. None of them were I feel like other shows might make one of them like a bit of a creep or a perv or something. Well, they did. They made the guy turn into a tree a bit of a Yeah, but he, he he was yeah, obviously being corrupted by his organs turning to wood, but he never acts like creepy in a sort of like a perverted sort of way. Towards Siri is what I'm saying. No. Oh no, he he sort of did. He he did said he? that No, who was it? Was it him? It was one who said his line that, um, to Geralt. is like, oh, if, I, um, if I'd if i rescue a princess, I'd be visiting her every night or something. He said something like that, I think. 
Maybe, but... Um, and then Geralt punched him. I think most of the princesses they rescue are probably of age, but then again, this is a medieval setting. Let's not go down this avenue. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm fairly sure the guy was a bit creepy, even though he was turning into a tree. To be honest, I kind of really appreciated how fucking hurt they all looked on the fact this guy had to die. Because not just yeah. Geralt and old Geralt. I've forgotten his name. But... <laughs> old Geralt. <laughs> 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 I'm just like. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna, i fucking look it up. It's, I don't worry. I loved his character, so I feel bad. I should was, remember it because I loved. Good, he was in the yeah, game yeah. as well, so I feel bad that I'm not remembering him. But not just him and all the others, because they were all pissed at Siri a little bit that she, but for whatever reason, he died and all that sort of thing. And they were all like so fucking heartbroken, like. And it wasn't just like the standard, oh, sad for five minutes and they get on with it. Like this carried on in episode after episode. Like they're all really pissed off. Uh. I think his name is... Is it Vesemir? Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, Kim Bodnia. Yeah. Right. K-I-M-B-O-D-N-I-A. Yeah, no, he he was really cool. I liked him because he was a very sort of he was yeah he was he was he was fucking you know he was Dumbledore of Viking Hogwarts and he was so so awesome and nice to Siri and all that especially when he and when he found out her blood could make more witches he was pretty much jizzing out his ears. Yeah, I like, fucking, oh, holy shit, yeah. give me your blood. I don't know why he was going to give her the potion before. Just in case you die, can we, you know, fill up a couple of barrels yeah. of your blood, please? Yeah, in that. <laughs> you know? and then, like, Karen walks in, it's like, it's like okay, okay, bro, like, I know that you're doing magic, but you've got a young girl tied down to a bed. Chris Hansen has entered the <laughs> fucking chat. <laughs> they made one potion and they instantly went to give it to the person that's the only one that can make this potion. Yeah. And after she. <laughs> make a couple just in case. Yeah, you need oh. a backup. You know that Geralt can carry... You know you can carry more shit, guys. Like, Just because Dumbledore willingly sacrificed Harry doesn't mean you need to do the same, old Geralt. <laughs> I guess at least Dumbledore died before Harry found that shit out. <laughs> oh, and Vesemir fucking shanked her. It's like, oh. Yeah. But again, you kind of understood him and all that because they built such a strong connection of this yeah. small brotherhood. Like, all the and, like, there's not, like, hardly any of them left. And the way those, well, like, fucking basilisks were... And she were... did just kill a load of them as well. Yeah, oh yeah, the two, he's, the two yeah. she, whose throat yeah. she slit, and then when she summoned the basilisks, and they were dying. Vesemir was like, I'm sick of this shit. There's two of us left. <laughs> also, like, they should have known something was up when she turned up in the castle dressed in that dress. <laughs> because they were like, <laughs> like, we're like what? <laughs> they should have known something was weird. When, when she did that. That's the point, yeah. She went from Sansa to Arya to Daenerys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, it's, oh, it's so fucking cool when they're all drinking the fucking, you know, their potions that makes them, you know. Oh, when they all took yeah, it. Yeah, oh, that's so fucking cool. It they're is ready good to, to see. fight, like, that's so good. It is good to see more than just Geralt and, like, that sort of thing. Obviously, the ginger guy took it and looked no different because <laughs> didn't make it. <laughs> Didn't make him look more pale, did it? I thought his skin got a bit darker. <laughs> <laughs> Makes everyone else paler, but for him, no difference. It's not like he's got a salt to lose, so... Yeah. I can say that, you can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I liked... Um... So glad he survived. <laughs> yeah, I thought... Uh... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I thought... I liked the the kind of the story about... Um, oh, what's it? it's like the main witch, the main witch woman. Oh, the one that's like uh, Yennefer's like teacher. Yeah, the one that took over the council with the with like the. Uh, yeah, I I kind. Was I, he Spanish? The Spanish like the warrior mage. Oh, I can't. Remember. Was he? I don't think it was. Spanish. I can't remember. You know I, what I mean though. The yeah, one she's I, shagging. I can't. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which you know, it's like oh, you should. Uh, it's like you should take your clothes off more, and then he's just wearing like his full like costume. Anyway, um, I kind of liked her, um, a little bit more in season two than I did in season one. Uh, mainly because I think season one kind of left off with her character kind of like oh, she's probably going to become a bit more like she's going to change. Um, and I kind of liked her. I I, I liked her more in season two. But not as much as I kind of wanted to. Does this Mage yeah. Guild seem really underpowered or ineffective to you? Because in the first season, I was often quite baffled why Yennefer was allowed to just sort of roam 
on her own. Like she had her first posting, and her charge died, and she buried the baby in sand, and then Yennefer just yeah. went off to do whatever she wanted for how many years, and then. And all she ever seems to get from the mage guild that taught her was just like a, you know, wiggle of the finger, like, oh, you're a rogue, oh, fucking no. Jennifer. <laughs> you're a rogue. Oh, look at you using your magic for your own means. We're going to send you a letter if you keep doing this shit, abusing your power. You're so, on probation. <laughs> you know, it was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then in the second season, oh, Jennifer, you were right next to Nilfgaard and you used forbidden fire magic. Oh, you're starting to look a bit dodgy. Oh, you've been a <laughs> naughty girl. <laughs> All right, so if you for whatever, if you kill this guy, not using magic, however, we're not meant to know that you can't use magic. Here's an axe. If you kill this guy, we'll believe you're not evil. Ooh, yeah, some which, which, which again, like if you were genuinely a spy and someone told you, oh yeah, kill this pleb to, you know, uh, prove your... You're not a spy. That's exactly what a fucking spy would do. Exactly. <laughs> like... Not to mention, and she absolutely betrays it and like gets on a horse and helps him escape. Ooh, that Yennefer. We're going to seriously oh. think about chasing you, perhaps, yeah. maybe. I'm going to write a strongly <laughs> worded email about <laughs> about the stuff that that you've done. Oh, also, yeah, you're allowed, you're allowed, you're welcome back to, uh, you know, uh, the Witch Guild. Doesn't matter, you don't have any fucking magic anymore, so you're just basically a normal person. Um, yeah, this council for me in both seasons, they start off seeming really powerful. Like they, like in the first season, you're introduced to this, and they're all advisors to every kingdom, and they all seem so... Fu- like they can project illusions, yeah. and they all seem this and that, and then they just sort of like fizzle off into meaninglessness. Yeah, I know. And, and, you know, I, I kind of relate them to... Uh, not relate them to, but like, they're a bit like... Like, you know the faceless men in Game of Thrones? It's like, when Arya fucks up, like, she gets punished, you know? Like, she gets turned blind. Yeah. And, and stuff and stuff like that. Like, her actions have consequences in this guild. Um, and but like, with Yennefer, it's just like, oh, yeah, well, you kind of get... Well, kind of... It's like, are they even less... Yeah, they just let her kind of get away with stuff that they've said vehemently that she should not do. So it's, yeah, uh, that's 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 what I mean. Like, like I kind of wish I'd like the the witch because the witch guild is a cool, cool like c- concepts and ideas, but I kind of wish I could have like I wanted to like it more. And then there was that did. weirdly buff, bold uh, wizard guy that was uh, talking to the owl and... with the beard. Yeah, yeah like, you don't uh, know if he was uh, crazy uh, or nothing. Do- Dougal. F- oh no. Oh yeah, Dougal from Outlander. He kind of reminded <laughs> me of the bad guy from the first Iron Man movie. Oh, Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Oh, my bold. God. Yeah, with a beard. He really reminded me of that bit, but, you know, sort of, like, jacked. And I'm like... I just started turning to my partner saying, why is he ripped? Aren't all mages sort of meant to be, like, they use magic to do all their things? So, how is he How is he ripped? I mean, in case he loses magic, he just has to fucking punch someone. <laughs> he plays He plays um, Dougal in, in the TV show Outlander, where he's sort of a bad guy, but not really. He's, like, a good intentions but poor execution i also remember the elves in that moment when they're in nilfgaard is like she the, obviously the elf queens give them oh, birth yeah. and then all the other elves start to slack off and you know try a uh, thing he tries to warn the elf queen yeah you guys said you'd be an army for us like well now we want to focus on rebuilding and i turned to my partner like isn't the whole fucking reason they're given like sanctuary here is if they fight <laughs> like, yeah, was, oh, these, um these are clear like Fringilla. Oh right. Fringilla baby. I was looking at the elves like this is a two way street. You get a home and you fight. Yeah, yeah. You can't just suddenly stop you know, I, fighting. I literally I literally this is the biggest thing. It's like it's like I get it, like the elf genocide, like that's awful. But then like this you know, Nilfgaard says like, Hey, you can come and we'll keep you safe as long as you fight for us. Alright, deal. And then the moment of baby's boy is like, Hey, so like you know that our side of the deal. Yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Who's going to pay for all the food and shelter we're giving you? That sounds like your problem. Yeah, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> and then at the end, when fucking whatever her name is, starts killing all the babies. It's, oh. like, it's like, mate. It's like, bro. It's like, how unself-aware are you? You know that people hate you, right? And you've just given all the elf-hating people complete actual fact to hate you more. When that happened, I literally turned to my partner and said, She prints of Egypt, him! 
<laughs> that was my only red when she killed all those. <laughs> like she just Prince of Egypt yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, but, it, it, but it's it's like like your elves. If you want people not to think that you're bad people, maybe don't go around killing babies that haven't done anything to you. Oh no, wait, killing babies of the people who have helped you. What, did, you she do, do, did she do that in Nilfgaard? I swear she I did. I had a conversation with my partner saying, where is she right now? Because apparently they'd left the city and they were travelling. I thought they'd gone to that next kingdom well, or something I mean, that did it. Either way. Arte, Artrax? Artez? I, I think know. it was called, something like that. Anthrax. Uh, <laughs> the Kingdom of Anthrax. It's the Kingdom of Anthrax. <laughs> Wait, I wasn't mean, that the name of the... die there. Wasn't that the name of the castle in Holy Grail? The Castle Anthrax? Castle it? Anthrax? Yes, it's not a good name, is it? <laughs> I swear that's yeah. what it was called. Let me know down in the comments. No one's gotten this far. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's like, if you don't want people to hate elves, maybe don't go around killing babies. To be honest, seeing so many of those elves being really... That was really uncomfortable to watch in certain scenes. and that oh, when yeah, They were just like being fucking kicked to death and shit like that. Yeah, it's like the Holocaust, isn't it? Even seeing, like, Nilfgaard hang all those people they thought were spies and, like, they're screaming, like, please don't, please don't, off the castle wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crack. Like, yeah, exactly. There was that child. I was like, damn, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> and obviously it turned out that young man that helped Siri in the first season, he was the spy for... Bold, yeah. ripped, uh, Oberon Bold, guy. Bold, ripped, Oberon guy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm... turned out to be kind of worthless. <laughs> all, the, all the kings of these kingdoms that were like, oh, yes, Nilfgaard, fuck. Yeah, the only thing... Everyone's I... weak apart from Geralt. You know that? You know the king that, like, fucks his sister? You need to narrow that down, mate. <laughs> no, there's only one. Yeah, I know. I did that dude. He's in Misfits, and he's a probation worker in Misfits, and he's really fucking funny, and I can't not just laugh at him for thinking of Misfits. I don't know why, but I like... Think, I guess I'm lucky I never got into Misfits. I tried the first season, and it just, like, I really hate this. <laughs> oh, yeah. The girl that touches you makes you tell the truth. I, I remember, Her voice pissed me off. It was makes like watching Gogglebox. The... No, it's the girl that touches you that um, makes you really horny. Oh, yeah, it was horny. I thought, who's... <laughs> Someone There's, can read your mind. Yeah, someone can read the mind. Someone can turn back time. One of them can't die. One of them can turn invisible. The other one, like... Can't die. Yeah, you, uh, touch them, maybe, can't Because it's all, like, relevant to their, like, personalities. Kind of thing. What? So, like, for instance, the girl that can read minds, like, she's really self-conscious. And, she, like, she's always worried about, like, what people say about her. So, like, when the storm happens, like, the oh, power and the, is that she can read minds. And the runner wants to turn yeah. back time yeah, before not getting caught. caught with drugs. Caught with drugs. I never yeah. thought about that. Oh, I'm a yeah. dipshit. Um, but, yeah, the Mage Guild severely underpowered. It's like... No, I, was enjoy I, I really had high hopes for them as well in season two. I was like, they're going to be amazing now. It's going to be great. But then they... I mean, when lackluster. you saw them fight in that battle at the end of the first season, the one that's, like, making a wall of, like, tree yeah. roots and... Obviously, the girl that's causing things to like, catch fire because people are dying, sacrificing themselves so she can... Make... Like, you saw yeah. a lot of cool mage shit and it was like, oh, awesome. And then season two came around, like, oh, mages suck again. Yeah. None of them have done anything cool. The fucking archaeologist mage, he turned out to be kind of boring. Had a scene with Yennefer. Wait, you know Yen? Yenny. Or however oh, you that dude. Yeah. Archaeologist know. mage, that's what I call him. I never really cared about him. Either. Indiana Worthless. <laughs> <laughs> I never really cared about him that much anyway, to be fair. I don't know. Wait, then there was that temple they were at for some reason that had that old uh, that old black woman who was actually kind of awesome speaking to Geralt and uh, Siri and Yennefer and all that sort of thing. Do you remember her? It was when that guy that could like click file for, found oh, them yeah, and yet por dude. portaled them out of there and shit like Or yeah. Siri portaled them out of there and that. That guy turned out to be fucking worthless. <laughs> Just yeah. running all over the place, gets fire bleated into his own. Face. Uh, yeah, and, and like not even from like Matt, just her spitting booze in his face. I mean, to be fair, it was pretty funny. Oh, it was I, great. I, I I did like it. Um, and also, oh, I did actually like that. I really enjoyed that bit with Jennifer where she's pretending to be like Yaskia's drunk wife, <laughs> or whatever that finds him in a in a. Before. And that whore that betrayed them, sold them out yeah. to the guard, is like, never trust a whore. Yeah. And again, it's like, uh, again, it's, you know, kind of relevant to, oh, God, take a shot, because talk, we talked about the Holocaust, but, uh, mm. hey. um, about like that, about how, like, you know, neighbours informed on, 
you know, on people and stuff like that. Um, I really like, I really enjoyed it. Like the, the, the paranoia is like, yeah, you don't know who to trust. The prostitutes they had up in the Witcher Hall were pretty good themselves. They were pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. There was like that bit when that tree was attacking and they're all like, oh, fuck this shit. This ain't all worth it. Let's all get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I really actually thought that um, that uh, the the fight scene between uh, whatever his name is who turned into the tree. Yeah. Like, so I suppose that would be a, another sort of witchering scene, I guess, because he's a monster. Yeah, and I, it, it was kind of cool the way they chained him up and then when it seemed like we... We don't have the time to find a cure for him. We gotta like get the fire and like the way the I think it was yeah Geralt was, like flamed his sword and like fucking, yeah that, that was did cool. a Barrett Dondarrion <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, they 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 like skinned they like dissected him and skinned him and then left him out like in the mountains <laughs> and already the wolves were like coming. I was like oh food <laughs> like, this guy. <laughs> Again, I just like the way it affected all the other witchers. This isn't like someone, oh, we've lost a teammate. Like, this guy, they probably... Because witchers do live for centuries, so this is probably yeah. that they've known who's like, been their brother. They probably all trained together. So this, yeah. is, so this is, like, pretty much a brother to them. And they and he's just yeah. been killed. And, been like, yeah, and been when you together. saw that tree, did you notice the Easter egg on, on all the different medallions and you saw the one from the game, the proper witcher symbol? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had to pause to point it out because my partner didn't know. I was like, "That's the actual witcher symbol." <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm, I'm that kind of person. Yeah, it's like that's the actual witch. Like in like in it too, when you see the Tim uh, t- the Tim Curry Pennywise in that room full of all the clowns, mm. and you saw his thing. It's like that's it. That's like, I'm the worst to watch <laughs> films with. <laughs> yeah, I am, I am insufferable. <laughs> and um, I liked. Um, I, I, I say I liked. I would have. Uh, Again, I think there was sort of lack of, uh, not, well, yeah, a bit of lack of kind of, like you said about witcher, witcher, witchery. Witchering? Witchering, yeah. Witchery. Like, witching. I, yeah, witching. Um, I, I would have liked a bit more kind of like sword play from, from Geralt. Really. Yeah, there wasn't, I guess but other than that fight he had in the temple sort of mm. thing, there wasn't really a ton of sword choreo, was yeah. there? Yeah, and then there, I mean, there was that. It was at the end, you know, with those like guards from uh, Sintra that what that Geralt? came up. Yeah. Oh and yeah, then yeah. Jennifer yeah. and uh, Siri, like. Yeah, and he right. showed up. Obviously, they. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, that was cool, but. Jennifer yeah. teaching Siri how to use a uh, chaos magic was kind of cool with the bridge. Yeah, and then she's like, "Stop doing it!" And Siri's like, "No, fuck you!" And then she starts bleeding from her eyes. Which I was like, con- "Oh my god!" But it is consistent with her character because as they just displayed in the thing, she doesn't give up. She does it until she gets it right, which is kind of an because int- which could you know be a detriment to yeah. her in the future. This is a character that doesn't know when to quit, which is good for training, but bad in other areas like that. Like who knows in the future, her unwillingness to give up may end up being yeah. fucked. Which yeah. I think is a good thing because characters need flaws, and Siri yeah. being stubborn to a detriment, I think, is good. Yeah, and uh, even even like like Geralt as well. He's like, I mean, they even say it, don't they? Sort of like like father, like daughter, don't they? That he's like a a, a mule, isn't he? Like he just like if he doesn't want to do something, he's just not going to do it, <laughs> and no one's going to force him to do it either. I picture like Geralt and Siri, you know that scene from uh, Bad Boys when a guy comes to pick up uh, Martin Lawrence's daughter. Like, how old are you? He's 16, you motherfucker, look 30. Like, yeah, imagine motherfucker, you look 30. Siri's on her way to prom and Geralt opens the door and there's this little guy there like, who are you? <laughs> I'm here to pick up Siri, sir. Yeah. <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> Invites him in and just starts sharpening his sword. <laughs> I expect a home by nine. Shing! Because <laughs> Geralt would absolutely be that kind of dad, like the fucking the giant humongous growling O from like the Goof Troop Goofy movie. <laughs> no, I like um. I don't think I'll be that kind of dad. Like my my kid, or my daughter will bring a boy in, and I'll have so many swords over a fireplace and all that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you know her uncle. Her uncle Rob has a substantial gun collection and a wide back then, garden full of bodies. But then, if he, but then he says, <laughs> but then I hope that he would say he has guns. I fucking love guns. I'd be like, 
Come to me. <laughs> oh, like in American Dad, when Steve's uh, Stan hates uh, Steve's do- uh, girlfriend first, and then like he puts his gun on the table and says, "Just so we're clear, is that a Ted nine p millimeter? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know about guns? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dad uses one to shoot the eyes out of squirrels. <laughs> my God, <laughs> that's a tough shot. <laughs> yeah, I'd hundred percent do that. <laughs> and just loves her instantly. And then when she made like sandwiches for Steve, Francine gets pissed like, "Who's that fat so thing she is? Oh, is Debbie a larger woman? I hadn't noticed." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, to be honest, uh, do you think like Geralt's? I don't. I don't want to say fatherly, but maybe uh, maybe white knighty to a point. Obviously, because I said earlier, he in a way he was coddling Siri. Yeah, like his overprotectiveness. Do you think that developed naturally? Is he like? I feel like he's sort of like a a gruff but cool uncle. <laughs> I'd agree with that. <laughs> Maybe. I'm just saying, do you think his, like, 100% sort of thing, like, is earned? Because obviously the first season... Sorry. Halfway through the first season, he then starts to try and track her down. And start of the, fir- start of the second season, he's already like, stay on the horse, do exactly what I say. Mm. Like, do you think maybe there should have been a little bit more time to develop him wanting to protect her a little bit more? Do you know, actually, thinking about it, yeah, I think... Yeah, because I think because yeah, because I I know I, I think that's true because it's definitely sort of in the first third of season one. He's just all about the money. Like, he's a bounty hunter, isn't he? Like he's got like he doesn't care. All the mercenary, like, the witches, aren't they? I mean, I mean, you pay someone to kill something. I guess. Yeah, like, I guess so there really, not a really hunter, is no but, difference. Yeah, but yeah, you you get paid to do dirty work. You only cares about you know the it's coin. Sort of like, it's sort of like a gardener, but the grass is monsters. Yeah, <laughs> blood makes the grass grow. Um, I'm the lawnmower, bitch. <laughs> yeah, blood makes the grass grow. I'm the fucking sprinkler. Oh yeah, um, that fucking plant because Siri has elder. How yeah. in her whole life growing up does she never have a fucking nosebleed or something? <laughs> Well, she bleeds from her eyes, apparently. <laughs> this is going to be a gross question, but obviously very soon she's going to come of age as a woman. So you probably know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I don't fucking know she's magic, man. I, obviously... I haven't thought about it. I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought, though, that she was kind of a bit like Eleven from Stranger Things, because Eleven from Stranger Things, when she uses her telepathic power, she bleeds from her nose. Oh, but... do you think that's maybe a rip-off, then? Um... Well, Stranger Things is not. Wait, no! Didn't X Men do a similar thing? They had like when Jean Grey used unlocked her Phoenix power, she started to bleed and shit. Oh, like that. yeah. I suppose it shows stress. But then, then again, I think Siri's more hardcore. That's why she bleeds from her eyes. <laughs> that is proper fucking emo. Is she, is she gonna have to fucking like you know, wear t- tear blood and shit? Yeah, like is she that? gonna have to like wear glasses? Like, it's like. <laughs> Like when she gets older, she's like, okay, so here's the thing. When I was really young, I used telepathic powers and I bled from my eyes. Turns out, not good for you. And the kids will be like, yeah, sure, whatever you say. Whatever you say, me, <laughs> No, it's true. It's true. Of course it is. There was an apocalypse and we went to a dust planet and there were Mad Max people and everything. Okay. It was the wild hunt. You're a wild cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and I did this obstacle course where I got hit in the head loads of times. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Do you know what that sort of obstacle course is referred to as? Gauntlet. Yes. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> he preempted my fun fact. <laughs> yeah, gauntlet. I, I, I won't lie, were you watching the whole thing like, I'd like to try that? Uh, not that specific. <laughs> I would have given that a go. I remember as she was going through it, even before when she came to the... The spinning uh, bits after she got yeah, through the, the metronome wooden, things like she needs to duck into it, sort shit. of like in Indiana Jones when he was going through the fucking traps there, and there was that giant blade that decapitates you, and obviously uh, Harrison Ford's uh, Indiana Indy had to learn to duck and do a roll sort of things like you got to duck the first one, and I was figuring out along with Siri, it was so much fun. I, I, I definitely would not be agile enough to, <laughs> to do to do that. Um, I don't know. Well, that's Maybe. Well, was she, but you'd learn. The point is, would you keep doing yeah, but it? she's small. Though. How many times would you be knocked on your ass before you were like, well, it fuck it? It depends if I die or not. She, well, it was uh, all made of wood. But you she's, die. Yeah, but it's like pointed wood, isn't it? Yeah. You might do. Might nick an artery in your leg. You're fucked in medieval sort of time, <laughs> aren't you? Well, I think you're mm, fucked in these times. <laughs> but she's small and wily. I'm... <laughs> I'm I mean, I'm... I'm I'm 5'8 and very unfit. <laughs> Average height for a man. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan's 5'9. <laughs> no, I'm 5'8. 
Oh, well, I'm 5'7", then. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, below average is, below yeah. average is I think, 5'6". It's, so it's not about the size, it's what you do with your height, which... Oh, maybe maybe I would do it, then, if I'm smaller, then. I might be able to do it. <laughs> I don't know. No, I definitely would be able to do it. Do you think you could, you could be no a witcher? I've got no sense of balance. Oh, fuck. Someone offered you, like, Rob, do you want to be a witcher? Oh, fuck no, I don't want to be a witcher. You want to be, like, an enhanced metahuman sort of thing? <laughs> Oh, no, I wouldn't be a witch because then Geralt would turn up with lots of problems and shit. <laughs> and they would be like, look, mate, I'm just trying to chill in Viking Hogwarts and you're... Oh. I won't lie, I did kind of like the idea of that, that in wintertime they all just go back to Viking Hogwarts. Like hibernate. <laughs> yeah, they kind of just chill. What do they say? They clean, they train, they make more of their elixir sort of thing. They just have a time of it. It's like, hey, we're all back. I just love there being so many other witches and then more arriving and that. It's like, it made it seem so much more real. So that you, yeah. as the audience member, you didn't have to focus on Siri. You didn't have to focus on this overarching bullshit. You're able to just enjoy this fucking reunion of yeah. witches and it's good. who've been all over the country and doing shit. Yeah, and it's great world building as well. Exactly. Because Perfect. Like, good point. You saw, like you said, the, the the guy in the first, the witcher in the first season who died. And you see Geralt. And now you actually like, like again, expanding the uni- expanding the the universe and having more witches. Oh shit! Now you know why. In when Geralt came across his body, it took his like medallion. Yeah. Because they put it on the tree. Yeah. Now, like now you know why he did that. Dog tags. Isn't I never it? thought about. Oh yeah, yeah shit. Yeah. Wait, do you take those off, dip fallen yeah, soldiers? Yeah, you do because it's it shows that they're like dead potentially and oh. identify like if so like like the mo- Spartan shields. Yeah. Thing. Also, like like if you're. You know, as terrible as warriors, if you get like fucked up beyond all recognition, you have dog tags that shows like who you are. So then, shouldn't you keep it on their body? <laughs> well, no, you pull it off and say like, "I found this on a body." Ah, oh, so right. This person's dead. Uh, and again, like witches, witches, um, witches, witches. Uh, and yeah, like, the, the the tree, like having them all hanging. Uh, and stuff like that. The sheer that. amount of medallions yeah. there were was... And yeah. I like how they change. Because obviously in the opening, like, uh, text crawl, you always get a different symbol each time and shit like yeah. that. And yeah, no, that's really cool. I, I like that, actually. Um, also, um, what I think is really... Um, again, like you were saying about how they treat each other, how so close, the t- tight-knit the witches are, about how sort of... A band all, of brothers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> about how, like... If there were like thousands of witches, then like you know, even if a hundred die, it's like okay, that's bad, but like not that bad. But the fact is, like one death means so much. And that that um, end fight when they're dying yeah, left and right, yeah, like exactly. oh it, shit, it bring, yeah, exactly, it brings so much more you know gravity to a witch's death. No wonder old Geralt was so pissed off about it. I know his name's Vesemir. I yeah. like old Geralt. <laughs> I, yeah, much like I like Homer. Because he Weasley. really he really <laughs> liked Siri, but even he's like enough is enough is like, enough. I I have had it with these fucking dead witches in my fucking dead hall. <laughs> or would it be Stab. A, or would it be a, <laughs> I've had enough of this motherfucking little girl. <laughs> I mean, to be fair though, it's like... <laughs> oh, that yeah, ginger no, like, maid you turned up and being like, oh, yeah. you need to stop being such smelly boys to her. Me, Like, shut up, bitch. Is Siri's that, like, learning have, to be cool. It's like, have you not <laughs> seen this place? Like, you are literally the only two women in this place that we have seen for ages that were not whores. Like, like just, this is what we're just... Or, no, sorry, not allowed to say that anymore. Sex workers. <laughs> she just strolls in and she's like, you guys are all so smelly. She's, she's a girl. It was like, like, I've been fighting, bitch. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? By treating her like a witcher, she's become an absolutely capable badass. That obvi- that put you on your ass with her vision, and then she so tried shut to, your mouth. And then she tried to bang Geralt as well, which is like... Yeah. But then Geralt, out- ultimate chat, was just like, no, mate, denied. Well, that's obviously because of Yennefer and all that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. But he could have done it and no one would have known. You could almost say that was the most out of character Geralt has ever been, turning <laughs> down some tail. <laughs> Geralt bangs everybody. <laughs> I suppose in the grand scheme of the TV show, it would make him a bit unlikable because people would be like, why aren't you loyal to... I was going to say Genef. <laughs> why aren't you loyal to Yen? But Their reunion was a little bit interesting when they're talking about, oh, I really cared for you. I really cared for you too. Then... Well, then act like it. I d- yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I didn't really get that either. You re- I, I, to be honest, I ne- I've never felt much chemistry between them. 
no, other than she's hot. I mean, the only reason they were their fates are tied together is because Geralt had to fucking wish for it with the gin, and when Yennefer found out about that, she was like, "Fuck you." <laughs> Do you know that is actually? You know, sorry, going going back, we um, we talked about improvisation. You know, uh, it's in season one where uh, it's with it's it's when they're in the whatever castle. It's not really a castle, like the house. What is a castle? Castle House Keep, whatever, with Yaskia and Yennefer, <laughs> when he starts singing the song, and he's like, oh, Valley of Venus! <laughs> Apparently, like, um, <laughs> he just did that, and he, uh, he he made a bet with the actress who plays Yennefer. It's like, <laughs> it's like I bet you that um, they won't put this in the show. <laughs> and then they put it in the show. <laughs> Netflix is like, we're still like $30 billion in debt. All the footage is being used. Yeah, exactly. But I googled I... that with my partner the other day, and they are still in debt as fuck. Oh, yeah. that it's literally like uh, that term, like too big to fail. Like airports yeah. and shit like that. Like they can be severely in debt, but get to keep doing shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like when you're 30 billion in debt, what's another 50 million? Yeah. What is that? That's nothing. It's peanuts, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, 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 50 million. Oh, oh, oh. Small change. Yeah, I'm 40 billion in debt. That's nothing. Yes, put it in your mouth and suck it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away there with the amount of money that I was talking about. But right then, as a Rob, are you, uh, to finish up, are you optimistic for season three of The Witcher? Do you know what I am? I am, actually. You're not worried that from this point onwards it's going to be nothing but plot? Um, no witchering? I think that that's my there worry. potentially could be stuff that's better than witchering. Fuck, we never even talked about those fucking monoliths. <laughs> oh, yeah. But they're, they're not hugely... They'll be more relevant in season three. I think, like, the witchery is cool, for sure. And I like to see it. And it has... It's been in both seasons. Um, however, there are... I mean, much like I said, like, with, uh, like, series, my favourite character in season two... Like I think her story is is gonna there's gonna be more stuff more interesting stuff than witchering I think. Um, hopefully, yeah. Um, I I feel like if if the main intrigue of it is just slaying monsters, then that's you can't really go further than that. Whereas with plot, like advancing the plot, I feel like if the plot isn't advanced, then I just that's wish it a was problem. Meshed a bit more rather than a couple episodes of fun and the rest is just plot. Yeah, I think they entwine them quite well though, because they um, had the they had the vampire in the first episode. They had big ant. There was that giant what, millipede monster yeah, that big, burst uh, out of the tree or something. Yeah, the big ant yeah. millipede, ant, well, uh, the big bug, the tyranid, and then at the end, uh, oh, and then they had you know matey boy turned into a tree, and then I guess they were slaying basilisks as well. I suppose that was sort of. Monster. I was quite surprised how yeah. hard they were to kill. I would have thought like the witches would have. Potioned up would have took him out quite more quicker yeah. than they I mean, did. Geralt did. He killed one like within a few minutes. And they've all got the same fucking swords yeah. and skills. It's, that's another thing. Like, quick uh, last little point. I like the idea that Geralt's not like the strongest witch or the ultimate witcher. He's just another witcher. Yeah. It's not like oh, Geralt's the best out of all the other witchers. It's like go on, they're Geralt. All You're on... the chosen one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's on. He's the same as the other witchers, but. Last little thing, do you, ha just curious, uh, fuck, I need, we need to wrap this up, but what do you think the half-life is on The Witcher? Because now we've seen how the season two has ended, like, what do you think their limit is? Are they going to be oh, a Game what, of Thrones? Does it go into eight seasons? Season-wise? Oh. Yeah. What's the half-life on this? Do you know, I think Witcher could go for eight seasons, hmm. but that's because The Witcher books are much shorter than Game of Thrones. I'm, um, I'm, I'm a lot less optimistic. I think maybe four or five. Because it really I, seems I, like this thing with Siri will be wrapped up in either it. season three four or five. four. May, I, okay, maybe I'd push it to six. And it seems like since the first season, everything's building up to what's going on with Siri. Mm. I think shorter but better it is, is kind of... Uh, I think that would be good. Whereas like Game of Thrones had the potential to be really long. And um, it's, it's come out um, relatively recently that George R. R. Martin actually went to HBO and said, I want to make Game of Thrones 10 seasons of 10 episodes each. Mm. But they were like, no, fuck you. We're going to do eight seasons and season eight's only going to have six. So yeah. the thing is like, 
George, I might. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to the books on Audible. We're not sponsored by Audible, but you know, we probably should be. Um, yeah, and there's so much. <laughs> the shit we say will yeah. never be sponsored. Yeah, by anyone. Um, but there's, there's, there's so. What's the most wholesome company you can think of to sponsor is Teletubby. No, that like, what's a, what's the most wholesome? That's what's creepy. the most wholesome brand? I'm trying to think of like the most innocent, the most I mean, family friendly brand feel, to sponsor I feel, us. I feel like having like a brand and a corporation. And calling them wholesome is a bit of an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, fucking, I don't know, Baby Bell. If we, oh, <laughs> if we were sponsored by Baby. How Bell. the fuck would a Baby Bell like a uh, sponsor advert go for us? <laughs> Do you like cheat? Do you like it soft? Do you like it wrapped? Do you like it in your mouth? With that little <laughs> bit of red wax, no one likes. Yeah. And it's actually a pain in the ass to peel, at least with a cheese string. You can see, we wouldn't work already. We're already talking about cheese strings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Baby Bell, if you're listening to this, give us a call. Um, do you think, for example, say the thing with Siri is wrapped up either next next season and season four, and to save Siri from her fate, Geralt ends up dying the end of season four, but The Witcher doesn't end. It carries on. But Siri has become a witcher, and she's the new witcher of season six, and it keeps going with her. Would you be okay with that? A Geraltless witcher, but it's naturally led to a good conclusion with him with four seasons, and it carries on as Siri. Um, would I be okay with it? Probably not. Would I watch it? Yeah. Or do you reckon the witcher should end, and maybe that would then, for her, be a spin-off thing? I think if it's a spin-off, spin-offs... So are, the witcher should are, end with are, Geralt. Are, Famously bad. I think if if, if if Geralt dies, then I think you should end it. I think that's yeah. what's probably going to happen. It seems like he, you know, his her protector and all that. So Geralt's going to sacrifice yeah. himself eventually. It's and, inevitable. And then you have, and then maybe you have like a sort of implied thing that Siri goes on to be a witch or something like that. I mean, I'd rather I four seasons. That's perfect than eight mm. seasons that's dragged out mm. personally so then a bit like a bit like again because i'm a bit of a masochist a bit like the, the recent doctor who i'm gonna like if it's gonna be bad i'm gonna watch it just so i can chat shit about it <laughs> do you know what i mean could you imagine if uh, the season's popularity led to a movie I'd, a witcher movie again i'd watch that would you want that to be separate from the series canon or like something like this movie takes place in between season two and oh. three sort of thing. Do you know what I'd like? I'd like maybe if they have like maybe like four seasons, like you said, and then end it with like maybe a two part movie. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Well, like they do with like the last Harry Potter and yeah. other games. Like, yeah. So you have like four seasons of TV show and then end it with a two part movie. What would be a plot line? Because that would be actually, I think, be quite good marketing. For people that have not watched it on Netflix or the TV show, when you bring out the movie, people are going to start buying Netflix. They're however, start watching it. you yeah. are, however, putting yourself at a small disadvantage, implying that in order to understand what's going to be happening in this movie, you need to watch like four seasons. Like, what's that? Like a 160 hours worth of content to know what everyone's talking about in the movie. That's not much general appeal. Oh, well, maybe people watch it. <laughs> Possible, I do agree with you. It's an interesting marketing point. Who um, all these? I'm, I think what actually, we call no, video... do you know what? I think you're right actually because usually it goes the other way. People make a movie and then they have a TV show, don't they? Yeah. So actually, yeah, no, that's probably true. Yeah, people like again, it's things like um, I'm trying to think of like TV shows that have been going on for ages, like Walking Dead. Like I'm not going to watch that just because there's so much to watch and I just don't have I think the problem is Henry Cavill to Geralt has now become fucking like uh, Alan Rickman to Snape like Geralt will never be able to be recast so if you have to do movie anything you do with Geralt in the future has to be Henry and he'd do it as well oh absolutely well I don't know how old he is but eventually you know like Hugh Jackman he won't be able to keep up with the workouts forever yeah Hugh Jackman, what, has like 20, had 20 years of Wolverine under his belt. And he literally said the workouts to look like he did were too extreme, yeah. which is fair. The guy's in like, like his like mid-40s now. Like, being ripped at that age isn't really that healthy. He also had cancer. Hugh Jackman? Yeah, I swear Hugh Jackman had cancer. Holy shit. I did That's, not know oh, that. Wait, that might not be true. <laughs> Hang on. Again. <laughs> no. Oh, this is going to be funny. 
Siri. Ha! <laughs> Did Hugh Jackman have cancer? Yeah. We got dead air. What? Hugh Jackman undergoes biopsy for cancer scare. Oh, maybe he had a cancer scare. Oh, it was just a rumour. Fair enough. Only, okay. Uh, Sorry, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> we got to stop now because these <laughs> we can't make oh, them yeah. too long. All right, then. So we're both excuse me, optimistic for the future. If you've enjoyed The Witcher, let us know down in the comments your favourite episode, your favourite character. Oh, no one's listening. Fuck yeah. it. Thanks right. for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls and... Everyone in between. Until next time, you've been listening to... Laughing on a Train.